Okay, so I recently had a fun little idea for a video and decided to get some community help with it. So I guess we're doing this now, 100 Smash 6 candidates to go over here. I did look at every single response, that doesn't mean that every single character from those made it on here, but as you can see, we've got plenty to go over. If your 90s JRPG fan favorite one-off entry didn't make the cut, I'm sorry, but also I don't want to hear about it. Had to make a bit of a decision here whether I wanted to make this list like a purely personal bias list or make it a little more balanced. The answer I went with is kind of a bit of both. There's a hundred characters here. Obviously, I'm more familiar with some of them. I did do my research on the less experienced ones, watch some Let's Plays, watch some footage of their abilities, read their wikis, all that kind of stuff. Not quite the same thing as actually personally playing through their games. That's clearly going to play a role in here. There's no way around that. At the same time, I'm not going off just purely what would make me happy. I am going to try and explain my reasons at least a bit. All right, let's do it. Okay, so let's just get these guys out of the way immediately. I'm a big Fire Emblem fan. I really like the series. There's way too much Fire Emblem representation in Smash, and neither Lin nor Hector would be my first choice for another Fire Emblem character. I would go with Celica personally. She's a light user and a dagger user, which really distinguishes her from a lot of the other Fire Emblem characters, except for Robin, which she does kind of overlap a bit with. Lin probably the most popular and famous Fire Emblem character that isn't in the game yet, which means the fan base is not going to shut up about her until she gets in. And on top of that, I actually think she's a pretty cool character. Doesn't have an incredibly defined moveset, which does matter to me quite a bit on this list, as you'll see, but like fan interpretations of her have been pretty well done, and that's because her archetype within the Fire Emblem game suggests a pretty clear direction for her, which is like fairly well distinguished from all of the other characters we currently have, and it also distinguishes her in a way that I think, at least for me, would legitimately be one of the most fun characters in the entire game to play. So I'm gonna say A tier. Yes, I am opening this list by putting a Fire Emblem character in A. We may as well rip that band-aid off now. Hector. Hector definitely seems to be the other popular suggestion from the Smash community. I agreed with this a lot more in the past when he was an axe user which had no rep from Fire Emblem and Smash, they're all sword users, except now Byleth is in the game, and Byleth does use an axe, so that argument for different weapon representation from Fire Emblem has gone down a lot for me. Hector C tier. Personally, I think he would be really cool. I like, like, heavy weapon users, that would be fine in my book, but generally speaking, Eh. Black Shadow from the F-Zero series. This guy's going right into S tier. Not on his own merit, but because Ganondorf, despite being improved over the years, still has a lot of the clone of Captain Falcon in him, and a very common request I've heard that I completely agree with is to declone Ganondorf by passing his moveset onto Black Shadow instead. Despite how uninspired Ganondorf's moveset in Smash is, there's clearly a large fan base behind it, and if you mostly displace it to another character, not a perfect solution, but definitely a lot better than just dropping it entirely, it opens up new design space for Ganondorf to be faithful. And a canonically faithful Ganondorf, as I've said before, is someone that I want more than any new character. Like, I'm not even kidding. I will literally sacrifice any single character on the roster for creating a decent, canonically faithful Ganondorf. Travis Touchdown from No More Heroes. Really well-defined moveset, really fun personality, really unique weapon, pretty popular fan request. Clearly he would need to be toned down from his original games that applies to obviously any M-rated character, but the ones who have appeared in Smash, they don't tend to be too harmed by that. The series still does a pretty good job making them feel like themselves. I think he gets another S tier, honestly. Really solid choice. I understand why people were disappointed when he didn't make the cut last time. Maxwell from Scribblenauts. I think the Scribblenauts series is fantastic. It's such a cool achievement in gaming, a series based around being able to write whatever you want and have it enter into the game world. I also think there's absolutely no way to really properly represent that in Smash. So what you'd probably end up doing as a compromise is just creating a bunch of like the, you know, sillier or more useful words and bringing them in. Which wouldn't be bad. I kind of like these characters who spawn a completely new thing with every single attack they do, and Maxwell would almost certainly be in that camp. Smash is such an established premium series and the spots are held in such high regard though, is that necessarily something he manages to work his way into? I'm not totally sure. There's a realistic chance that he's going to show up in um, multiverses, and honestly I think that could would be like pretty cool, but multiverses have something to prove, right? Smash really doesn't, and I think Maxwell's just not quite in the upper echelon there. It would be decent though, I'm gonna go B tier for Maxwell. The Knight from Hollow Knight. Metroidvanias are honestly just prime material to pull from for platform fighters, there's platforming overlap to begin with, and they also tend to have really broad, diverse, interesting movesets, and Hollow Knight is maybe the best regarded Metroidvania of the last decade, and it's also absolute, like, 
premium, premium cream of the crop indie rep. I don't really see a good argument for Hollow Knight not being in Smash at this point. That's going to be another S tier for me. Alucard, similar boat. I would be totally on board with having more Castlevania rep in the game, and Alucard is such a cool character to pull inspiration from. I'm a sucker for vampires, and Alucard just has such an incredible pool to pull a moveset from. You could make him more based on the sword, more based on transformations, more based on magic. Yeah, Alucard's going in S tier. I'd be so happy with that one. May as well get Miriam from Bloodstained Ritual of the Night in there too, a sort of spiritual successor to Castlevania made by one of the original creators. She shows up in other stuff too. I've only played the original Bloodstained, but I love that game. Gigantic array of different spells to collect, and a lot of the time they're really fun, really overpowered in a great way, really interesting. I think you could create an absolutely amazing moveset for her. In terms of just pure moveset potential, this is probably my favorite of the Metroidvanias. At the same time, got to acknowledge that she is an indie character, and like, not a poorly known one, but certainly not up there with the top of the top. And on top of that, her game is multi-platform, and the Switch release was by far the weakest of them. In terms of just what would make me happy, this is a free S tier, but I'm gonna bump it down to A just to sort of, you know, put at least a little bit of logic behind this. Master Chief, such a popular character in the West. You people do not know what you're signing up for with this guy. Do you seriously think a character entirely based around shooting you from a distance is gonna be fun to play against in Smash? Seriously? Have we not learned the lesson here that just because he got a good legacy does not mean your mechanics are gonna be fun to play against? There's not even really a way around it too because the only real close range tools he has are like the shotgun and the beam sword. You're not going to make a move set based around the shotgun and the beam sword. He's going to have grenades. He's going to have rifles. This would just be a nightmare if he made it into the game. I'm sorry. I know he's a popular request, but I firmly believe that if he actually makes it into Smash, people are going to hate him. Kept out of F tier because, hey, everyone likes Halo. I really liked Halo back in the day, but no. Please don't put him in Smash. Let's just go ahead and fix the empty F tier slot though, shall we? No. Or Kane from Rivals of Ether, who kind of seems to have been established as the mascot character for the game now. Rivals of Ether is a great game. Rivals 2 looks like a great game. I really like Orkane. I really like seeing Orkane pop up all over the place. But he's already a platform fighter character, which makes him appearing in a different platform of fighter a bit less interesting. I think that would be fantastic to see just in terms of how cool it would be to, you know, see Dan Farnese and his team's work recognized in that sense. Need to consider, though, that in the grander scheme of things, very few people know who Orkane actually is. Very well known in the platform fighter fan base, but that's at most like a couple million people compare that to Steve's rep. It's not even in the ballpark, or even something like the Xenoblade series. And part of me almost kind of likes the idea of these, you know, indie platform fighter reps showing up in each other's games more than showing up in Smash. There's something very neat about that. This is a tough call for me. I kind of want to put it really high just because that would be, you know, great support for a game that deserves the support. I think B tier seems fair. He'd play really well in Smash, deserves the rep, but at the same time, he's got some solid arguments against him as well. Cuphead, another shooter, and basically all he's really got going for him are shooter mechanics. So his moves that will kind of just come down to different sorts of guns and maybe the parry thrown in there somewhere. I think Cuphead's a fun character. I think the success of the game is well deserved, but in terms of actual Smash rep, eh. The series has plenty else going on for it. I don't feel bad about this one, and I think that a me costume is basically just perfect. Sackboy, what do you do with this character? So this is kind of the problem with a lot of characters on this list. I know you can invent a moveset for anything, like Wii Fit Trainer does not naturally lend herself to a moveset, but Sakurai made it work. Duck Hunt, Rob, Sakurai made it work. That's great and all, but I'm generally far more interested in characters where you can picture how they're gonna play right from the start rather than having to make a moveset up to justify their inclusion. I know Sackboy isn't quite in that camp. His moveset did get fleshed out more in later years, but like, is that a particularly memorable moveset, a particularly popular one? Eh, I guess C tier, it would kind of make sense, he's got some stuff to work with, the Sony rep would be interesting, but even then, I'm kind of thinking about maybe putting him in F, I don't think there's that much to work with. Now, Kratos, this is different, this is the kind of Sony rep I'm talking about, I think he's going up in S tier. You got the axe, you got the blades, you got the shield, there's so much cool stuff you could make out of a moveset there. Extremely well-known video game character, plenty of to work with from his older games as well. He's technically appeared in a platform fighter before, and even though that game was terrible, he was sort of one of the highlights.
this, he's one of the guys you look at and you're like, okay, I can actually see how a PlayStation platform fighter would work if everything but Kratos had been changed. Yeah, I think this one's super solid and would be an exciting reveal. King Hippo from the Punch-Out series. You know, Little Mac already has so many issues with this design that need to be fixed on a fundamental level. Making a slower, heavier version of Little Mac I think would be so much worse, you would be even more incentivized to run away from him. Focus on fixing Little Mac first, and honestly beyond that, I really don't know if the Punch-Out series necessarily needs more rep. Bomberman. This guy gets talked about a lot, and I don't get it. All he does in his games is drop bombs. There have been multiple fan interpretations of him at this point, and I'm sorry, they're just not that interesting. All he does is drop bombs. I'll put him in C tier just because bombs are at least a mildly more interesting projectile than some of the characters down there are gonna get, but like, I honestly don't get why he shows up in discussion so much. The Heavy from Team Fortress 2, who seemed to be sort of the most common request from that series. I do not get this one at all. Again, I like heavies, I'm a fan of the heavyweight archetype, but a heavy character who is not gonna be able to chase you, and he's a projectile character, so he's guaranteed to just have to shoot at you, he's got basically no no semblance of a moveset. If you were to do him faithfully, I think he'd either be unplayably bad or just infuriating to fight against. Yeah, no, nah, get this guy out of here. Raiden from Metal Gear. I don't know if the Metal Gear series is necessarily one that is clamoring for more rep and smash at this point, but there is some interesting stuff you could do with Raiden, and he is very distinguished from Snake. I'm a sucker for sword fighters, and I know the series has a lot of them, but we don't really have this kind of like cybernetic sword fighter deal right now. You could build him in other ways too if you wanted to. I don't know if he's like a necessary inclusion, and he's not a character that's gonna blow everyone's mind if he's revealed in the next Smash game, but at the same time, Honestly, who is at this point? We're kind of past that to some degree. Okay, you know what? We're going to put him in B tier because he's at the very least sort of coming to the table with a different identity than anything in Smash right now, and I think there's a decent chunk of moveset potential for him. Let's do the fighting game reps. I'd rather see a new fighting game franchise represented than another Street Fighter character, but Chun-Li would make a lot of sense to add to sort of, you know, complete the trifecta. Helps that she's got a moveset that's very different than Ryu and Ken's. Ken obviously started off as a clone of Ryu even in the Street Fighter series. In fact, all of the traditional fighting game reps we've seen so far have been really like big, burly, brawler kind of characters. She's way faster and lighter and more fleet-footed, so I think she's actually distinguishing herself pretty well. Would be a very unsurprising character, and I'd kind of rather see more franchises get reps, so I'm not going to put her in S tier, but I think she earns A pretty solidly. I really like Akuma. I've never played him, but he's definitely my favorite of the Shotos to watch in Street Fighter. That's especially true in Street Fighter V, where they really made more of an effort to give him more of his own identity. Ultimately, though, he still did originate as another iteration on Ryu, which means he's not bringing the the same kind of new stuff to the table that Chun-Li is, but the trade-off for this is that you could make him his own fleshed-out character, but you could also make him another Shoto Echo Fighter. And Echo Fighters are one of the concepts I think Smash Ultimate most dropped the ball on. I wanted to see an entire new Echo Fighters pass, right? Just like really simple characters to whip up and put in the game. Akuma would take a little bit more work than some of them, sort of similar to what Ken got to distinguish himself from Ryu. That's not completely out of the question though, you could make a reasonably satisfying Akuma without needing to totally revamp his entire moveset. Akuma gets S for that reason, not as a standalone character, but as a potential Echo Fighter, which I really, really want to see utilized more. Scorpion. Now, this would be a cool moveset, and the Mortal Kombat franchise definitely deserves some rep and smash. Yes, you need to tone down the sheer brutality quite a bit, I don't think that's that big a deal, and you're getting another traditional fighting game rep that's very different than anything we've seen so far, and it would be a very fun reveal compared to most of the franchises in Smash, I think Scorpion goes in S. Siegfried from Soul Calibur. In terms of personal attachment, this would easily be at the top of my list. Soul Calibur is probably my favorite traditional fighter. I get it's not an incredibly traditional fighter, it's 3D with ring outs, but you get what I mean. And while Siegfried isn't my favorite character in Soul Calibur, that would go to Astaroth, he's definitely up there, and his moveset is sick as hell in Soul Calibur, and is very different than anything we've seen in Smash. He's got the alternate form Nightmare that you could potentially do something with as well. He is kind of, you know, another anime boy with sword sort of deal, which Smash is certainly not lacking, but I think the giant one does distinguish him, and the Soul Calibur franchise is already famous for its crossover, so seeing some of that brought the other way around would be really neat. I don't think Soul Calibur is actually a series that is most in demand for representation in Smash, so realistically I think this is sort of more around the B tier or A tier kind of range, but I'm letting my full personal bias come through here. This is going in S. Soul Bad Guy. I think Guilty Gear is definitely a franchise that deserves rep in Smash. It's gotten pretty iconic over the last entry in particular, and stuff like Roman cancels and other systems that Guilty Gear uses would be really cool to see implemented in a platform fighter. Rushdown Revolt Spark system is partially inspired by Roman cancels, and that plays out really well in its own game. Having said that, Soul is kind of in the camp of, you know, 
anime character with a sword more than some of them have been, and I'm also going to say he definitely sort of hews closer to the existing FGC characters. He's sort of the Shoto of his game, so his moveset tends to be a little bit more simplistic, and you can definitely see some parallels to some of the other fighters we have. He'd be cool, I'd be happy to see him, but I don't think he has nearly as much new stuff to bring to the table, so I'm going to put him in A tier. Doom Guy. This is Master Chief, except he wants you to play up close. Yeah, sure, he's still got really big, powerful, long-ranged guns, but Doom's fundamental design, particularly the reboot, is really based around getting you into your opponent's face. You got stuff like the chainsaw, glory kill, shotgun, stuff that gets a lot more emphasis than any similar systems in Halo do. Doom as a series definitely does deserve rep. I don't know if it deserves nearly as much as some other stuff out there, but it's on the table. I fundamentally don't think more traditional FPS games really translate over that well to the platform fighter genre, and he, despite, you know, the crazy over-the-top nature, when you strip it down to its fundamentals, he still does have a pretty standard arsenal. So I'm going to put him in B tier. Hey, editing Mockrock stepping in here, just a few notes about how this list played out. It took a bit of time to figure out the feel of each tier as well as exactly what the list was aiming for. What it ended up turning into is what I think I would call a fully biased list, but with empathy behind it. In other words, I'm not pretending to be objective, this is the list that would make me happy, but part of what would make me happy is characters that would make a lot of other people happy. This is also the first thing I've tried to record since being sick, as you may hear at a few points, which means in practice this actually took many hours to record, and of course, over that time period, my perspective on some characters did shift a bit. So I'm letting you know now that later on in the video I will be stepping in and changing a handful of characters compared to how I put them in the original recording session, and Doom Guy is going to be the first of these. You can do more with him than you can with Master Chief, but I don't think he has the most potential of the entire roster. More than Agent 47 though. A huge part of the appeal of the Hitman franchise is the creative ways you can kill people. You can't really represent that super well in a platform fighter, so the two options you have are like throwing random stuff at people, or just guy with gun. I don't care about either of those. If this guy ends up in Smash somehow, I'm going to be pretty disappointed. Monster Hunter. The moveset is definitely there. We know that just from the Monster Hunter franchise itself, as well as seeing Monster Hunter show up in Marvel vs. Capcom. I like gigantic over-the-top weapons. I like the diversity of weapons. They're all there. And Monster Hunter is also just a phenomenally successful franchise, especially in Japan, which does play a big factor into who makes it into Smash. There's not much argument against Monster Hunter, except that I'm not really generally a huge fan of these Avatar characters. Characters that only really exist to represent the player character rather than being their own, you know, defined personality. That actually has a pretty big impact for me, but in terms of just pure moveset fun, I think that Monster Hunter still sneaks into S tier. Similar kind of just pure avatar character here, the Ashen One from Dark Souls 3, or you know, similar title for one of the earlier ones. And I'll throw in the Dragonborn from Skyrim as well. Dragonborn is honestly a very similar story. Extremely popular game, extremely popular character despite the lack of personality, and so much of a moveset that you can pull from. Tons of different weapons, magic, archery, stealth, brawn, like you could take this character in a lot of different directions, which is almost a bit of a problem because no matter what direction you choose it's going to dissatisfy someone. We're also talking about one of the most iconic video games of the last like 15 years though and there's so much that this character has going for it so I think it'll go into S tier as well. Dark Souls. So I think Dark Souls 3 has by far the most interesting moveset potential to draw from. They really upped what characters were capable of doing in that game but Dark Souls 1 is still probably the most famous Dark Souls entry and while Skyrim has at least one you know fairly iconic pseudo canonical interpretation of the character there isn't anything particularly similar for Dark Souls is just an incredibly generic guy in armor. And I think the moveset potential, while not bad, is just a bit of a step down from the other two, so I'm going to go A tier. Hat Kid from A Hat in Time. It's a well-liked 3D platformer good indie rep, but her hat powers aren't that interesting, and even though it was a successful game and a well-regarded game, it's not like an earth-shattering one. F tier, I don't know who's really asking for this. You know, like, no disrespect to the character. She's cool in her own way, but I wouldn't really want her in Smash that much. Zelda, my favorite series outside of Smash. I just announced that Twilight Princess, a hearty retrospective, is now in the works for the main channel, by the way. It's not going to be ready anytime soon, but if you don't follow me on Twitter, there you go. Minna is a super cool character, and she'd probably come packaged with Wolf Link. The problem is, Wolf Link's moveset is terrible. Like, he is not fun to fight with in Twilight Princess at all. Minna's got a couple more interesting intricate powers, but you'd still need to make a decent chunk of stuff up. Would be another quadruped, that's interesting, we haven't seen a whole lot of that in Smash. But as great a character as Minna is in the Legend of Zelda series, I think she's one of the all-time best. In terms of just pure moveset potential, I don't think she's quite there. Kind of a similar story with Skull Kid. Definitely one of the most requested Zelda characters I've heard over the years, but his moveset is just not that interesting 
in game. Fan interpretations kind of back this up where you're like, I mean, yeah, it's cool to see Skull Kid in the game, but I'm not really seeing a whole lot on his actual moveset that really convinces me he needs to be here. You could do some stuff with music with him. His movement would probably be pretty interesting. You know what? I think we can put him in A tier. I'm okay with that. I just don't think he's quite at the top of what I'm looking for. Gear him. Now, gear him would be fun. His personality is super over the top. He's got a fun moveset in his boss fights, but his moveset, again, isn't that wide, really. But there are sort of some implied powers you could do interesting stuff with. Also, doesn't exactly come from the most popular 3D Zelda games, so that sort of needs to be taken into account. B or A tier for gear him. I, I think I'm gonna go B. Another one of these characters where I would personally be much happier than a B tier if I heard him announced in a game, but I wouldn't be so much happier that this would be sort of, you know, my personal bias just massive bump on the tier list. Impa, you know, kind of a ninja slash warrior style moveset. Sheik already sort of has that role filled, but Impa seems a lot more primed to be really powerful. Another instance where her in-game powers haven't been particularly well defined, but because Sheik is in Smash, we sort of have a bit of a template for what Sheikah do in the Smash series. Hyrule Warriors exists, and at this point, I would hope that any new Zelda characters added to Smash, which also appeared in Hyrule Warriors, would use that as inspiration. I see no reason not to. I think Impa is going to be the S tier rep from Zelda for me. I definitely want to see a new Zelda rep. It's been way too long. And out of all of them, even if Impa doesn't have the most directly shown moves at potential in the Zelda games, I think there's plenty of it to pull from and you could get a really cool character out of it. Leon Kennedy. He is a guy with a gun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got a chainsaw. He's got some wrestler moves, whatever. But like, it's a dude with a gun. Dante, another guy with a gun. Oh, and another gun, and a bunch of swords, and a whip, and devil powers, and a motorcycle. Uh, yeah, okay, now we're getting somewhere. Very, very, very combo-based, similar to Bayonetta, so definitely someone you need to be careful with. But he's another one of these guys with just a ridiculously over-the-top personality and fighting style. Lots of potential options to pull from for a moveset, which are directly shown on screen. Devil May Cry isn't the single biggest video game franchise in the world, but it's not unpopular, and he was a really common request for Smash Ultimate. I'm personally not a huge fan of the Devil May Cry games, but you know what? I think you could do a lot with them, and people have been asking for a long time. Octoling. You know, the most you could really do is represent like a different era of Splatoon than what Inkling is doing. But if you're gonna do that, can't you just like update Inkling's moveset? I know Splatoon is one of Nintendo's golden geese right now, but I just, I'm trying to justify why exactly you would need to add another Splatoon character to Smash. Like the moveset for Inkling is not predefined enough where if you wanted to add some kind of other element, you couldn't just stick it onto Inkling somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not really feeling this one. I'll put it in C rather than F just because, again, there are so many Splatoon fans, so you could do something with it and a lot of people would be decently happy, but in terms of actual concrete reasoning behind it, I'm not seeing it. Zero from the Mega Man franchise. You know, Mega Man has a strong enough legacy that I think they probably deserve another rep, and he has a very different moveset, you know, much more of a close-range sword sort of deal along with the guns. I think you could do something pretty different and interesting with him. I think there are other movesets I'd rather have in the game, and I think there are other characters that would blow people away more, but I think he's a pretty solid choice, honestly. Ratchet and Clank, more PlayStation rep, and rep that does have some interesting stuff going on with it. Their moveset is extremely cool and diverse, but at the same time, it's mostly another kind of projectile trap moveset. I think there is definitely more to do with it than most shooters, because the projectiles are at least really creative. Ratchet and Clank is a popular franchise, but not like an incredibly popular franchise, and that wouldn't really be my first choice for PlayStation rep. I wouldn't be unhappy to see them, but I'm not exactly clamoring for them. Sebastian Toot from Wii Music. How did I not see Yoshimitsu show up in any suggestions, but he did. Listen, I liked Wii Music as a kid. I honestly got many hours of good fun out of it. As an adult, I'm man enough to look back on my childhood nostalgia and go, wow, that was terrible. What is he even going to do? Like, what are you going to do with this guy in Smash? I wouldn't even give him an assist trophy. I'm definitely not giving him a playable slot. Why is he on this list? What are you people doing? Primrose from Octopath Traveler. She's in an interesting archetype. She is the dancer of the group in that very typical JRPG kind of sense, you know, stat buffs and stuff like that. But the game always starts off with a single character before you start adding to your party, and she's very based around, like, dagger usage and dark magic. So I think she'd stand out from the pack a little bit, but Octopath Traveler, not necessarily the kind of game I really am hoping to see represented in Smash. Could also be a character based around applying buffs to herself and debuffs to her opponent. That's actually pretty interesting too. You know, I'm 
kind of split on this one. I don't think anyone needs Primrose and Smash, but I've kind of talked myself into wanting Primrose and Smash. B tier. Lloyd Irving. Listen, Tales of Symphonia is possibly the series I'm least familiar with of any on this list. Not going to pretend to know a whole lot about it, but thankfully we already do have a fan interpretation of him, and he's pretty cool. The Magical Sword Fighter archetype is one of my favorites, and he's rocking double swords. I always like a good double sword. Decently popular request, one of these characters that would mean nothing to me in terms of actual character, but as an archetype would speak to me. Yeah, okay. Chrono from Chrono Trigger. Very, very respected JRPG with some cool ideas in it, but I'm honestly going to say that a lot of its coolest ideas are not necessarily related to combat. It does some cool stuff with combat, but for Chrono in particular, I find him, you know, a little bit more generic than some of them. I don't find his magic nearly as interesting. He's much more of like a typical anime katana guy. Chrono Trigger, though, again, is one of the more respected JRPGs ever made, so I think its rep would be somewhat warranted in Smash. But ultimately... Yeah, he's not really an archetype we need more of compared to some. I'm going to move him down to B tier, and I'm actually going to move him down to... I've changed my mind. Isaac. Now, Isaac is in the same camp as Lloyd and Chrono, but he is much more requested, and he has some of the most interesting magic of any of these guys. There's also fan interpretation of him out there that does him justice, and I've played Golden Sun, and I really liked how he handled combat. You could do the same kind of thing that Ness and Lucas do, where they also incorporate powers from some of their other party members, and I really like how those work and how they're animated as well. Honestly, taken at face value, provided he wasn't a particularly gimmicky character, he might even make it to S tier status for me, but I think certainly he deserves a place above the others in terms of just pure request value, in terms of pure interest from a combat perspective. Yeah, I think Isaac would be fun. Now that the list is coming together a little bit more, I'm just going to make a couple of other revamps as well. Yeah, seeing who we've got left, the Avatar characters are just not quite cutting it for me. And I guess I'll put a bit of my bias aside and move Siegfried down. This one hurts, though. Hades from Kid Icarus Uprising. Really fun character, love his voice acting, love his writing, and he's got a pretty decent versatile moveset, but he is a giant. So he's got the Ridley problem, but way, way worse, and shrinking him down takes quite a bit away from his character. Kid Icarus is a fairly modest series, more of a cult favorite, and it's a cult favorite that already has three Smash characters in it. Yeah, sorry Hades, you're fun, but I'm not really seeing all that much of a spot for you. Zagreus, another Greek dude from the game Hades. This got some of the most unanimous praise I've ever seen a video game get. I haven't gotten to play that much of Hades yet, I wish I could play more of it, but from what I have played and just watching other people play, man this game is good and the moveset is really good too. It's a roguelite so you can pick up a bunch of new stuff along the way, different power-ups and weapons and stuff like that, and you end up with a pretty diverse range of options. Only real problem I can see is that he's not an incredibly famous character, but I think he's well liked enough that this would be a really cool inclusion and the thing I like about these smaller indie characters is that they're still, you know, a bit more surprising. I like Zagreus. I think Zagreus would be really cool in Smash, I'd be happy to see that. GLaDOS from Portal. I mean, Portal and Portal 2 are good games, but she's not even the one with the Portal gun. Maybe you give her the Portal gun, or like you have her do the trap stuff. I, I, I don't get it. How, how would this work? You know what? The answer is it wouldn't work. I'm not quite sure why anyone would ever suggest her. Lara Croft. Her moveset is so basic, you know, bow, knife, guns, grappling hook, whatever. I'm not saying there's nothing there to work with, but it's not particularly inspiring. But Lara Croft is also just an incredibly iconic video game character, so iconic that I think her legacy alone would put her on the table. But I do not care about that moveset at all, so I think we're gonna go B tier. Spyro, another one of these legacy characters. Pretty popular, decently requested for Smash. Moveset, I want to say, is okay, but also a bit tricky to try and translate into Smash. You can't have a free-flying character in Smash, and it's true that Spyro can't just freely fly around everywhere on every stage in his own series, but it's still a reasonably prominent part of the character's abilities that just could not make its way in. And again, I know that practically speaking, you could work around that without too much trouble, but with so many characters competing for these spots, I do tend to lean towards the ones where you wouldn't need to make those kinds of concessions. And outside of that, Spyro's moveset is like, okay? 
but I don't think it's anything particularly special. I'm honestly going to say C tier. Spyro is the kind of character that I think might be a bit cool to see show up as an assist trophy, but as an actual playable character, they're one where I think you might need to butcher them a bit too much. On the topic of butchering, Pyramid Head, Silent Hill. You know, I talked about the other characters from emerated franchises being able to translate over successfully. I don't think that really applies to Silent Hill the same way, which is overtly a horror franchise. Pyramid Head is at his best when he's really unsettling and disturbing. While I like how Pyramid Head looks as a monster, you know, he's sort of supposed to more represent psychological aspects of the protagonist. And to top things off, he doesn't really do anything. He's just a guy with a big sword. You see a shortage of those on this list. Cool character does not belong in Smash. Okay, let's just get this group out of the way. Fall Guy! No! No, 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 no! Ha ha! Yes, I get it. Very funny. Good meme. If we're talking about it seriously, it's a character that's completely faceless from a franchise that doesn't really deserve rep in Smash, certainly not as a playable character, and has essentially no abilities whatsoever. Yeah, you could like pick off bits of the obstacle courses and give them to the characters a moveset if you really felt like shoehorning that in there. I don't but you could. Among Us Imposter is actually shown to have some more interesting powers, clearly taking some inspiration from The Thing, the shape-shifting alien. Love The Thing, one of my favorite movies, and actually liked Among Us too. It was a game that I got some good mileage out of, and its iconic status is definitely there, but if we're being serious, we're not putting Among Us in Smash, guys. And... Fortnite. Jonesy from Fortnite is a FPS character from a franchise that would absolutely infuriate a large chunk of the older player base if he made it in. And you know what? I'm putting him in B tier. I know my demographics, most of the people watching this video are going to be males between 18 and 35. We are not the only group that plays Smash, and honestly having Fortnite in Smash would do wonders for preserving the game's player base. Fortnite has some pretty fun gadgets and mechanics in it as well. The only reason that he's not going higher, honestly, is because it's an FPS. And as I said, I think what you'd actually end up with here is a really unfun zoner. This means that I'm ranking Jonesy as the better zoner candidate than Master Chief. Am I really really willing to do that? Yeah, I think I am, because part of what I'm going off here is demand. It's not a huge part of the list, obviously, but I am considering it. And Master Chief realistically has been on the back burner for quite a while. Halo Infinite did certainly come through and give the series a shot in the arm, but if we're being realistic about it, it still pales in popularity compared to Fortnite. That's just how things work, like it or not. Even outside of that demand aspect, though, Fortnite has the building concept, which I think you could do more interesting stuff with than just purely being stuck with zoner tools. I am not in the group that hates Fortnite. I'm too old to be really into the Fortnite crowd, but I think if I grew up in that era, it would actually be a really fun thing for friends to be able to do together. I know there's probably going to be more than a handful of people really pissed not to see Jonesy in F tier, and make your own list. Shovel Knight. Look, everyone likes Shovel Knight. In fact, so many people like Shovel Knight that he's appeared in absolutely everything at this point, so I think his impact in Smash would be kind of diminished. He's even appeared in Platform Fighters, so that itch has to have been pretty firmly scratched by now. You've got options if you want to play him like that. He made it into Smash as an assist trophy, and honestly, I'm going to say that's just about right. I'm not going to put him lower than B tier, because at the end of the day, he's Shovel Knight. On paper, he's such a natural fit for Smash, but it's hard to exactly call that an exciting choice at this point. A moderate from Okami. I bought Okami recently, I haven't had a chance to play too much of it yet, but it is an absolutely gorgeous game, and the powers you can get with the brush are really interesting. One of these characters that isn't like universally super famous, but decently famous, and those that know about it tend to really love it. And I think there's a lot you could do with a moveset here. Amaterasu, I think that's gonna be an A tier. This would be really fun. Me Mage. I just kind of feel like we don't really need another me that much. I wouldn't hate the idea, but you need to come up with some kind of interesting take, and Mage I don't think is distinguished enough from Gunner at all. If you look at how most magic presents itself in the Smash series, the most common answer is going to be a projectile. I just don't really see the point of this, and I would normally put it in F tier, but the thing is, the Miis kind of have a little bit of that Echo Fighter thing going for them where they're just easier to design for, so putting another one in the game would potentially be another way to create a character without fully committing to all of the resources needed for 
for a full character slot. That's obviously a bit of an educated guess. I don't 100% know how the workload will pan out in Smash, but going on the assumption my guess is right, I think that bumps it up to C tier just because, you know, more characters is never something I'm going to complain about. If not for that, this would be F tier. Tifa Lockhart from Final Fantasy VII. If we're going to get more Final Fantasy rep, I'm not sure it also needs to be from Final Fantasy VII. Having said that though, Cloud and Sephiroth are both, you know, anime sword boys and she's doing something very different with the martial arts focus, so she's at least bringing new concepts to the table. Still, like, Tifa is obviously a very well-known character, but she feels a bit much for a single game. Yeah, I, I think C tier. Her moveset potential is also not bad, but it's also not the absolute best I've seen. Cloud completely blew everyone's minds and changed the standards for what a Smash character could be forever. Sephiroth, I'm gonna say not nearly the same impact, but he definitely had one of the most successful Smash reveals and people absolutely loved it. Tifa at this point, like, people would like it, I'm sure. Would it have anywhere near the same effect the third time around? No. Beautiful Joe. Kind of an under the radar character from a really cool franchise. The the issue with him though is that a lot of his moveset, while well, neat, is based around time manipulation stuff, which would be really hard to satisfyingly represent in a platform fighter. And outside of that, he doesn't really have all that much of a moveset, most of what's left are some pretty simple punches and kicks. I think he'd make a great assist trophy, but as a playable character, I think there are too many flaws. Rayman. Very respectable character from a long line of platformers, the issue is he really is largely just kind of a platformer. He's had some powers over the years, but they're not really that much of a focus. That's not a knock against the series in general. A lot of the strengths of it have tended to come from the production values and the really creative, interesting level design. So he's never really had to have a large amount of powers, but it is definitely a knock against him in this discussion. You see this show up in his fan interpretations as well, which in my book actually tend to be pretty cool characters, but if you look at what their canonical aspects are actually bringing to the table, it's not really all that much. He's kind of been lying down dormant for a while, so he'd be largely a legacy pick, and I just I don't think his legacy is nearly as strong as some of the other characters on here. He, I know he's got his fans, I know he's got a lot of fans in fact, but in terms of the broader just video game playing public, I feel like it's not that high. Not F tier low, but I don't see that much potential for him. Okay, let's do this if we're doing this. The Rabid, Rabid Peach. Mario Rabbids Kingdom Battle was a great game, and it's got a lot of cool powers in it. Obviously a little bit more of a zonery sort of deal, but there are actually lots of interesting melee attacks and closer range stuff too. Rabbit Peach by herself wouldn't necessarily be the all-time greatest choice, but she could be used as a template to sort of introduce a lot of powers from the various other Rabbids too. You got Vampire and exploding body bashes and all this kind of stuff. As for the humor, I know that the Rabbids can really grate on some people. I'm not immune from that either, but I will say that I thought Mario Rabbids Kingdom Battle generally used them in appropriate doses. Doesn't always land, but at least to me, they were generally funny characters rather than just eardrum splitting characters. I'm sorry, Rayman fans. I'm gonna make your biggest fear come true here, and I'm gonna put the Rabbid above Rayman. <laughs> The Kongs, we got Funky Kong, we got Dixie Kong. Funky Kong has had this really weird arc of being a meme for Funky Mode and also being the best character in the most competitive Mario Kart title, but in terms of what he actually does in the Donkey Kong franchise, it's absolutely nothing. You know, he's like the guy who distributes power-ups or the mechanic or whatever. One bonus mode in one port of one game is not doing stuff. He's funny, I guess, but in terms of actually being allowed in Smash, mm. Dixie, different story. True, she's not really fleshed out any more than Diddy Kong is, but she does have the hair spin thing, and because she's not too dissimilar to Diddy, but has a distinguishing characteristic, that makes her another great Echo Fighter candidate. And the Donkey Kong franchise deserves an Echo Fighter, so she's going in S tier. <sighs> Every single thing I just said about Dixie Kong also applies perfectly well to Funky. As I brought up earlier, there are going to be a handful of characters at the end of the video where I'm going to adjust their positions. Usually I'm not bothering to point these out, but I dropped the ball so hard on this one that I am going to step in and say, yes, I caught it, I will go back to him later. 
Shantae. Pretty long running franchise at this point, and since it's taken a Metroidvania turn, that means she's gotten a lot of different powers over the years. Really popular character request. Her base moveset isn't that interesting, it's mainly just the hair flip thing, but again, she's got a lot of other stuff that you could tack onto her, particularly the form changes. Yeah, you know what, I don't really care that much about Shantae, but I think enough people would, and she'd be an interesting enough candidate based on her moveset alone that she she works her way into S tier. She's one of the characters that I think isn't completely unrealistic to end up in the game at some point. Agumon. I'm only doing video game characters for this list, which I expected to exclude Agumon, but as it turns out, Digimon actually counts because the first time they ever appeared were those little pocket things. The Digimon are pretty one-trick ponies though, and Agumon is the lowest evolution, which definitely puts him in that camp. As the evolutions start going up, you get into a bit more interesting stuff for them to do, but I don't know if it's that much more interesting. And even if Digimon technically is a video game only franchise, I, I don't really think of Digimon as a video game first and foremost. I much more associate it with that not particularly amazing TV series back in the day. I know it's still running today, and for all I know it's great. I haven't seen it, have no plans to see it, but in terms of what we're actually working with, he just feels too out of place, and I don't feel like there's that much you can do with him. Yeah, F tier. I liked Digimon well enough as a kid, but even from a nostalgic perspective, I'd just kind of be confused if this announcement was made. Pokemon. Two requests that seem to show up a decent amount. Toxitricity and Eevee. Eevee, I don't really get tiny character, which is always going to be infuriating, and the only way to really deliver on any semblance of a moveset would be to give them some kind of evolution mechanic. I thought through a few different ways you might try and do that in my head, and they all end up being super gimmicky. Maybe some kind of design genius out there can do something with it, but as far as I'm concerned, I don't think this seems like a great candidate, and it's going enough tier. Toxitricity is cool. Out of all the Gen 8 Pokemon, this is probably my favorite. My ideal Pokemon rep would be another trainer who uses Pokemon that are neither starters nor from Gen 1, just really popular Pokemon over the years, in which case I I would definitely want Toxitricity to be one of them, but even standalone, I think they're pretty cool. Don't know if they're the most iconic Gen 8 Pokemon, but they're definitely one of them. Yeah, Toxitricity I think could have an awesome move set and would just be an awesome rep in general. Do a little bit of cleanup duty. Monica from Doki Doki Literature Club. There you go. Oh no, Monica is a meta character and the guy who created Doki Doki Literature Club was also a Smash player in Modder, so it's so meta, it's all so meta. She could rate the game's code, she's not going in Smash. Springman, why on earth? Earth would we want a second arms rep? It barely deserved the first one. Honestly, I get why you would ask for him over Min Min, but if you're gonna put one character in and it's Min Min, okay, that's it. You're done. There are still so many franchises that don't have rep in Smash. We're not putting in two of this one. Astral Chain. Uh, you know, Astral Chain actually has some pretty cool gameplay ideas, but this sort of summoning capture system hasn't really tended to play out that much in Smash up to this point. If you look at like Joker, right, obviously they could could have done a whole bunch of different characters being summoned, but that's a lot of effort, so I think they tend not to focus on a character design that needs that many different models. Each model needs to be animated and given their own properties. You could definitely reduce this aspect, make them less faithful, focus on the sword more, but in that case, why not go with someone like Raiden instead, kind of a similar vibe. So I think his design risks being pretty lackluster, and Astral Chain just not really a series that tons and tons of people would necessarily be asking for for Smash. Meat Boy. He just kind of platforms. Very well-known, iconic platformer from that era, but eh, I don't really know what you'd do with them. Conquer, kind of in that classic Rareware legacy era, but a lot of the fun of Conquer comes from that disgusting humor, which basically couldn't be translated over at all into Smash. You know, he's got weapons, he's got abilities, the game throws him into a lot of different scenarios, which is a plus, but I don't necessarily think his moveset is that inspiring. He'd be kind of a cool nostalgia pick, but again, his legacy is not insane. I think they'd need to tone him down too much. I don't know if there's anything necessarily really reaching out desperate to be made into a moveset. Mario characters. Captain Toad. Uh, I've seen some interesting moveset ideas put out there that involve his lack of ability to jump. I don't think any of them actually sound fun to play. They're cool, conceptually, but in terms of actually being able to like make anything happen with them. Birdo, it's Birdo, kind of a whatever Mario side character, but they do get the Echo Fighter bump with Yoshi, so I think that moves them up into B tier just for that. Otherwise, I do not care. There's really not much you can do with this character outside of the egg spitting thing, but that could be the one distinguishing feature to make them different from Yoshi. I am 
honestly baffled by the continued requests to put Gino into the game, a one-off character from a single reasonably successful Mario game that would be a zoner. I have no interest in this, never did. I think a me gunner costume is basically just absolutely perfect if you're going to put Gino in Smash. I'm sorry, I know not everyone's going to love this placement, but like, I don't get it. I I really don't get it. Hammer bro, I don't get it even more. I truly don't understand why this one's on the list. You know what? I've taken executive action. Hammer Bro is now Yoshimitsu. Yoshimitsu appears in both Tekken and Soul Calibur, and he's one of the most creative, unique characters in either of those games. We're talking about a character who flies around using his sword as a helicopter blade and jumps around using it as a pogo stick, spins around until he falls over dizzy, spits poison, steals your soul, stabs himself for bonus damage. Yoshimitsu's going in S tier and should have been on here from the beginning. Mario does not need six characters, and one of them definitely does not need to be Hammer Bro. Paper Mario, I don't think you can make him an Echo Fighter, he needs to be his own thing, but there's still so much room to work with, Mario has had just an absurd amount of powers over the years, and Paper Mario has a lot of ones distinct from him to begin with. I know the Mario series is one of the best represented in Smash, but honestly, it kind of deserves it, and Paper Mario is an incredibly popular standalone franchise. I think Paper Mario gets an S tier. Waluigi, yeah, no, Waluigi gets S tier as well. He needs to be in the game already, seriously. He could still be used to represent the sort of Mario spin-off franchises, your sports, your cart, all that kind of stuff, but he's kind of materialized his own strange set of abilities over time, as well. He's got the rose and thorn things going on, he's got swimming, like Waluigi is a strange beast but a majestic one at that. Sans from Undertale. Uh, Undertale is a very influential game. I think it deserves to have that influence. I'm not necessarily saying that Sans doesn't deserve rep and smash, but again he's kind of one of these characters where I saw him show up as a me gunner skin and I went yeah, that's a good place for him. The format of Undertale's combat doesn't necessarily lend itself to platform fighter movesets. Like the bone stuff, okay, you're gonna turn that into a projectile. I can't see a way to turn it into a projectile that would feel really satisfying and coherent with the Smash environment. It even kind of lost the ability to blow up the internet by starting with the skin. Like if he gets graduated to a full character, okay, that's no longer anywhere near as big a story as Sans is in Smash. F tier, he's exactly where he needs to be right now. Madeline from Celeste. Really respected platformer, but she doesn't necessarily really do all that much in it. A lot of that game's reputation comes from the really slick feeling movement, including that dash, but a dash is not a move set. You could probably make some stuff up, include battling and stuff like that, and you know, you would definitely need to do some stretching, but I'm gonna say, like, it would be kinda cool to see her. We're not gonna give an F tier to this one. The moveset potential really isn't there, I'm not 100% sure this is justified, but Celeste is one of the best regarded platformers and one of the best regarded indie games in the last handful of years, so like, seeing it represented would be pretty cool. Cooking Mama, on the other hand, let's just go ahead and put that one into F tier. Why is this not even the first time I've heard her requested for the series? Like, w what is she possibly going to do? She's another character where if you say, I want her as an assist trophy, I start thinking about it and I'm like, oh yeah, no, there are all sorts of ways you could make that work, but as a playable character, she's nothing. I don't get what the Smash scene wants sometimes, and this is one of the biggest examples for me. Uh, Crystal, on the other hand, I know exactly why a certain subsect of the fanbase wants Crystal. In all honesty, while the rep we have for Star Fox and Smash right now is definitely disproportionate to how relevant the Star Fox series is, as Smash characters, they're some of the most iconic in the game. So I don't hate the idea of having another rep, and Crystal's pretty clearly the frontrunner. I see some moveset potential for her too, she could represent stuff like Star Fox Adventure with the staff. There's actually not all that much pure Star Fox represented in Smash because Fox was a Smash 64 character where their movesets were mostly made up, and then Falco began life as a clone, and then Wolf was similarly kind of a rush job that just pulled bits and pieces in from everywhere. So if they wanted to make her a bit more of the actual Star Fox character, you know, maybe use some more weapons and abilities from Star Fox Assault, the staff from Adventure again, maybe represent a bit more of the capabilities of like the Arwing and the Landmaster and other vehicles and gadgets, kind of like the existing Star Fox characters allude to a little bit. I think I'd be on board with that. So she's pretty firmly middle of the pack for me. The Chorus Kids. So I get that Rhythm Heaven is a kind of a mini game collection, which potentially gives you a lot of different things to pull from. You can just make a character out of the mini games. I still don't find that particularly convincing, though. This is another one of these characters where I just think assist trophy when I look at them. I've seen them requested a few times as well, and 
As with Cooking Mama, this is one that I do not get. Ori. Great series of platformers, and a great series of platformers with a potentially interesting moveset, and reasonably well-known modern-day character, but he, like Shovel Knight, has already appeared in a platform fighter, and it's Rivals of Ether, which is a platform fighter that lets the characters have more interesting mechanics than they typically get in Smash. So I'm putting him in there with Shovel Knight, where this would be an A or an S tier if we didn't already have an alternate way to play him. With one, I don't care as much. Crash Bandicoot. 3D platformer mascot with a long legacy behind him at this point. He's mostly associated with, you know, more pure platforming and then his spin move, which has some variations to it as well. He has collected a reasonable number of, you know, different powers and one-off setups over the years. So I think you probably could couple together a pretty coherent moveset for him, especially thanks to the newer game, which throws in some more scenarios and power-ups and stuff like that. Frankly, I don't really think the classic Crash formula is that great, if I'm being honest, but but the new one does help for sure, and a lot of people would disagree with me on that one. When you combine the pretty strong legacy with a moveset I would expect to be at least good, I think you can make a strong argument for him being in the game. When I picture Crash Bandicoot being played in a platform fighter though, I just picture a character who's maybe a little bit clunky to play. That's just sort of how he's always controlled in the Crash titles, and you can change that if you want to obviously, but Sakurai's always made character feel, staying faithful, a pretty important part of the games. I don't necessarily imagine someone unbelievable fun, the best, most interesting character I've ever played, but still a very, very solid choice, so a tier. Bandana D, here we go. At one point I would have said no, absolutely not, but to be fair, the Kirby series has kind of done a good job flushing him out into his own character at this point. I still think his moveset doesn't necessarily seem that interesting. I know we have fan movesets for him, which, like, he's a decently fun character to watch in action, but you look at him play and I'm not necessarily saying, wow, I'm completely blown away by this either. One thing that I do like about it, though, is that it can be used to represent other Kirby copy abilities as well, which is something that we really need more representation of. I'm gonna say that the Kirby games, yeah, you know, they probably do deserve another rep, and Bandana D is probably the front runner in most people's eyes, so I'll put him in A tier if nothing else, so Kirby fans just shut up about him already. <laughs> Ryu Hayabusa from Ninja Gaiden. He's got some cool attacks and power-ups in the Ninja Gaiden games for sure. We already have a few ninja characters in Smash. So many that we can't have another one? I'm not necessarily gonna say that. I don't want to say Ryu is exactly the most necessary character in the world, but you know what? If they were brought into Smash, they'd probably be really fun to play as. So I think he just worms his way into A tier. Aqua from Kingdom Hearts. There's a lot of source material to pull from to make a pretty interesting moveset for her. Uh, possibly the second most popular Kingdom Hearts character after Sora. Does Kingdom Hearts really need another rep? No. Absolutely not, and I think that obviously she's going to have a fraction of the impact Sora has if she was ever announced, but as a playable character, there's definitely something there. Yeah, I I've gone on record as saying I do not care the slightest bit about Kingdom Hearts, and I'm sticking by that, but she would probably be pretty fun too. Okay, we'll give her B tier. Tracer. Blink and Recall could potentially be very interesting abilities, I will say that. Now, having said that, I do not care at all all about Overwatch getting into Smash anymore. This would have been an interesting thing to do when the game was way fresher. I know there's a sequel that's supposed to be coming out soon, but I think the world as a whole, you know, has largely kind of moved on. Not saying the game's not big, even though it's at its heyday, it's still larger than a lot of franchises on this list, but it's certainly not a particularly exciting pick anymore. Despite the guns, I like that she's kind of an in-your-face character though, and there's definitely some interesting stuff. I could see this making a certain amount of sense. Still a decently well-known character in the grand scheme of things, and her moveset is not completely set in stone, you would definitely need to make some stuff up, but there's some strong basis there. Okay, the Sonic characters. Shadow, I think you could either make him an interesting original character, or turn him into an Echo Fighter of Sonic. Either of those options would work for me, and because of that, he goes into S tier almost by default. Eggman, you would probably need to stick him into a robot, and a fairly large robot at that, which can potentially be really clunky. It's not really a type of character I find that inherently appealing to begin with. Bowser Jr. is already doing a perfect perfectly fine job holding down the fort there, and even he feels a little bit, like, awkward at times. Not 100% convinced making a bigger, boxier version of that is necessarily gonna pan out super well. And a lot of Eggman's more interesting moments are the really big machines he gets to sit in for boss fights, which obviously do not transfer over to Smash at all. Just based on reputation alone, I can't really put him in F, but I don't like this one that much. Tails, kind of a similar camp. I know we've got fan rep of him, but even that fan rep, most of the stuff that they didn't make 
wake up isn't that entertaining to me. Tails Defining Trait, once again, is the ability to fly, and it's not like none of the other Sonic games have ever had to address this. You can't just freely fly wherever you want in every single Sonic game, but it's still kind of something that you need to take into account. It's part of the character that can't be fully expressed. He's also going to get a C tier from me. Knuckles, on the other hand, this is more interesting. I say that partially because there's already, again, a fan rep out there, and it's a pretty well done one showing that he can translate over well. Even without that, though, the particular powers that Knuckles has, the gliding, the punching, the wall climbing, all that kind of stuff, it's a cool basis for a character, and a unique standout basis for a character. Yeah, I think Knuckles fits really well into Smash. Chibi Robo. Very cute series. I know it's got a lot of fans, kind of the underground cult hit series that never quite made it sort of deal. I just fundamentally don't really think the tasks you're doing in Chibi Robo lend themselves particularly well to being a platform fighter character, though. His franchise kind of got ground into the dirt with some poor games, too, so it's hard to say he has that much of a legacy. Not that that directly takes away from the original game, which is still held in very high esteem, but it doesn't mean nothing either. Yeah, Chibi Robo C tier. Ring Fit Trainee. I'm gonna be honest, I don't even necessarily think we Fit Trainer needed representation in Smash. I really don't think we need a repeat of it. Obviously, they're not the exact same game, but the gimmick of using fitness moves to fight in Smash. Okay, we've seen that already. 2B from Nier Automata. Really well-liked character, and there's a lot of stuff to do with her moveset, which we know about because we've actually seen her crossover before, which takes a little bit of the impact out of this, but not as much, obviously, as directly appearing in a platform fighter. There's a bunch of material to work with for her moveset as well. She's got a lot of different weapons available. You could potentially do a lot with those pods. Pretty popular character. Nier Automata is a well-liked game. She's got a decent amount of fan requests behind her. Yeah, you know what? I know a lot of people are going to want to see her in S tier, and like, I wouldn't put her here if this was a purely biased list for me, but I, I get it. I can see it. Let's do the Smash characters. Okay, so Master Hand and Crazy Hand, same thing I've said before, you can't properly translate them into the multiplayer of Smash. They're too big, they're too specific, their moveset is already completely tuned for what they're there for. I don't want to see them smaller. I don't want to see that changed. I just fundamentally do not agree with the concept of putting Master Hand into the multiplayer mode. Sandbag doesn't have that problem, but at the same time, like, why does Sandbag need to be a character? This concept's been done before, ha ha ha, Sandbag fights back. Rivals of Ether picked up on the similar concept where it was clearly a joke, but he shut up in fan interpretations as well as a more serious attempt at making a character. And fair enough, but you know what? It just fundamentally feels like a fan game to me. If this ever showed up in real Smash, I would not understand what was happening. I think Sandbag is perfectly fine exactly where it is. Now, Taboo. This one's a bit more interesting. Taboo isn't that big, he's a bit bigger than the player character but you could shrink him down pretty easily, and he's got a really well-defined moveset. I don't hate the idea of Smash having an original playable character, in fact, I kind of like that a lot, and Taboo seems to make the most sense. I can totally picture a scenario where, like, the next Smash game comes along, and the new single-player mode has Super Taboo or whatever, and Normal Taboo teams up to help beat him, and maybe that's how you unlock Taboo, which I think would be pretty cool. This one tends to be pretty contentious. Some people really want a Smash rep in Smash. Some people are completely opposed to a character slot being taken up by that. If you are on the side that wants that, though, I think Taboo is pretty clearly the sensible choice. Phoenix Wright. Phoenix Wright does absolutely nothing in his own series that would even vaguely suggest putting him in a fighting game. I know he's literally appeared in fighting games before, but even there, it's like, I get the appeal of trying to force him into a fighting game mold, but but at the same time, they're clearly pulling this stuff out of nowhere. He's appeared in fan interpretations as well, and it feels like he's a fan interpretation. Nothing about him suggests that he should ever be a platform fighter character. And yet, he just keeps showing up. I keep seeing people want Phoenix right, and I don't. I really really don't, and make no apologies about that. Okay, Silex. Silex started off in Metroid Prime Hunters, which focused on a bunch of different bounty hunters alongside Samus. I don't really know why he was the one who was mostly chosen to continue with, but he was, and the thing about the Prime Hunters game that's interesting is they gave everyone very different powers than Samus. Like, everyone's got an alternate transform mode, but the rest of them are not the morph ball. And everyone's got a different weapon, which is not the charge shot. So Silex has to, like, link himself to his opponent, which is a potential 
potentially interesting direction you could take the Smash series that would push him very far away from the zoner mindset. At the same time, his bombs are way more explicitly a trap than Samus's are, which is a completely different thing to do, so his moveset would take some pretty careful coordination and could potentially end up either very disjointed or very interesting, but if handled right, it could be very cool. Now, is Silox a particularly popular character outside of the diehard Metroid fanbase? No not even a little bit, but there's definitely some potential there, and as time goes on and more Metroid games come out, there's been some stuff floating around suggesting Silox is going to play a larger role in those as well, so there's definitely potential for this character. Not going to pull the trigger on it too much yet, but B tier seems fair. And ending on Ravenbeak, and this is a good ending. I really liked Metroid Dread, and Ravenbeak in particular is one of my favorite boss fights in any video game I've played. He's an entirely new character, but his moveset that feels so fleshed out, diverse, interesting, challenging, fun. I really like the Metroid series, and I was expecting to like Metroid Dread, but I was not expecting to say that outside of a reworked Ganondorf, Ravenbeak is now the character that I most want in Smash. The flying he does in one of his phases would need to be toned down a bit. You know what? Yeah, that's perfectly fine. Samus does a pretty good job helping him out with that anyways, and the Metroid series absolutely deserves more rep, and I can't think of a better way to do it than including the main villain from the game that completely revitalized the entire Metroid series. It was a great game, and he was a great part of that great game. So without needing to say any more, I think it should be pretty clear. Yeah. Ravenbeak is going in S tier. And normally that's where the video would end, so let's update a few things. Doom Guy giving it more thought. There are actually a lot of ways you could design him in my mind that would turn him into a pretty cool character, and he was also a really heavy request. He is going to get bumped up to A tier. Hades, I actually think I was way too harsh about the size thing. It's true that in Kid Icarus, he's gigantic, but he's also a completely humanoid design, so you could shrink him down to Ganondorf size, and I honestly don't think that would be much of an issue. Ridley, this doesn't really work the same way. They did their best, but he still feels kind of awkward. And then going back and watching more Hades footage, his moveset actually is more diverse and interesting than I remembered, so he's getting bumped all the way up to B tier. Spyro, I guess I'm willing to move to B tier just based on the back of their legacy and fan requests. With the entire list in perspective, this was a bit harsh. Crash, basically the opposite story. His legacy is above average. Honestly, you could make a case for well above average, but his moveset, I still want to say, would result in a less fun than average character for this list, so balance it out with B tier. Girahim, you know what? Even if Skyward Sword isn't the most popular, popular Zelda game, he's a pretty popular Zelda character, and I honestly think his moveset is way more entertaining than a lot of the characters on here, so he's gonna go ahead and join Skull Kid in A tier. Toxicity. Okay, I did it again. I'm just gonna keep going with it. Toxicity, I actually don't need to change his tier placement at all. I just realized that I said Toxicity instead of his actual name, Toxtricity. That's probably the 10th or 12th time I've reverted back to it now, mainly because Toxicity is a better name that's easier to say and works better with the toxic part of the etymology. Tails, I did that entire sequence thinking I was going to put Tails in B tier, and then just kind of went and did C at the end, and I'm not totally sure why this was always supposed to be B. And then finally, Funky Kong. I tunnel visioned so much on Dixie Kong being the Echo Fighter candidate that it never even occurred to me, if you just take DK's moveset and give him a couple surfboard moves, which wouldn't be that hard to model or animate, then boom, you've got a perfectly good Echo Fighter. I would still rather see Dixie Kong in the game than Funky Kong in the game, but with that consideration, he's gonna get the biggest bump all the way up to A tier on the back of that Echo Fighter concept. And there you go, soak it in. The final, indisputable, definitive Smash 6 character tier list. Alright, that'll do it. Thanks for watching everyone, and let me know your thoughts. YouTube counts likes and comments to decide if this video should be passed around to more people, so if you think it deserves it, much appreciated. Retrospective on the worst of every Smash move above, all DLC edition of the best of every Smash move on my main channel below, and patrons, YouTube members, and Twitch subs get perks like early videos and access to my Discord server. Later, people!